Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. I graduated magna cum laude from the University of Northern Iowa with a degree in English education back in 1996. And uh, yeah, so I could have been your English teacher in high school. It was in, I, I was going to pursue something for the uh, secondary level of education. Um, even though I enjoyed, I think more than anything when I was doing the student teaching experience, I enjoyed the middle school, the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, uh, probably because I had the same sense of humor as a, a, a seventh grader. I still do. <laughs> Fast forward just a few years. Uh, any old way, I've got a top five list here uh, for students who are out there uh, related to school and note taking. These uh, were submitted by Snake Eyes Eleven, one of our active members here at live.perillo.com in the chat room. You may see it. There he is, right there, right there. And these no these uh, notes, these tips about notes, notes about tips uh, are relevant because my wife Ponzi uh, just went in for an assessment test. She's going to uh, pursue a degree, a college degree. We don't really know what it's going to be in right now. She's not sure which field she's going to pursue specifically. She's got a few ideas of the things she's interested in. Um, you know, for me, I didn't teach English. I now teach technology just because I enjoy it. Uh, I think more than anything, having a degree just shows that you have the um, ability to see things through more than anything else. So uh, Snake Eyes 11, top five tips on school and note taking. Number one, go to class and be prepared. Don't show up with nothing to write with. What I see a lot is students go to class with no paper or pen and pencil. May also help to bring more than one writing utensil. You may want to bring a highlighter and some extra pens. If you use a laptop to take notes, make sure the battery is fully charged or find the closest outlet. Be sure to save previous notes and study them every day. You never know when there's going to be a pop quiz or a test. Don't save your homework to the last minute. Read your assignment and do your work before it's due. Another thing, if you have a laptop, either buy an extra battery or make sure that the keyboard that you're using is super quiet because if you're in class and you're listening to the instructor and all you hear next to you is it drives me straight up the wall get a tablet pc number two have a conscious effort to listen and be attentive sometimes students will ask off-topic questions and you get bored and sometimes you fall off topic so always be prepared and stay attentive be prepared to adapt to whatever direction a lecture takes. When a lecture takes an unexpected detour, say a student asks a question you aren't particularly interested in, because students have a tendency to zone out when this happens. Before you know it, the lecture gets back on track, and you've missed crucial information that you should have noted because you had zoned out. It's very easy to get off topic. If you do miss anything that day in class, ask a friend or someone else for notes. If you were sick one day, uh, and come back to class and you realize you're having a test, don't blame the instructor for planning the test on that day. Always ask someone for notes when you are sick so that you can write them down. Number three, use a method that works for you. If you're a big fan of two column notes, then use that method. Be sure to also start each lecture on a different page and make sure you date and label all your notes. Don't use the same notebook for each class. Use a different notebook or a different notebook section if it's a, like a five a subject notebook for each particular class. You don't want to be writing notes for your history in your math binder. You always make sure you keep your notes dated Put them in order, keep them in order. This will help you study for tests and final exams. It's always important to develop a system of abbreviation and symbols you can use wherever possible. Number four, pay close attention to content. If something is written down on the overhead or the chalkboard, write it down, even if you think it's not important. Write down definitions to the words that are listed. Make sure you write down everything that is repeated or spelled out. Usually when my teacher writes something down multiple times, I know it's going to be on a test later on. Last step. This is important. Review your notes. Reread or study at least 24 hours later to make sure it's still fresh in your mind. Be sure to edit for words and phrases that are illegible or don't make sense. Write out abbreviated words that might be unclear so that you have a better meaning for that word and you understand it. If you need to make corrections or would like to edit your notes, choose another color to determine what you actually wrote in class and what you just edited. If keywords and questions are still unclear, you can go back and look and re-read the chapter, the fill in the definition in the left column. So, you know, again, annotating is important. If you're still unclear, circle it or underline it and ask the professor or teacher. Fill in anything you may have left from the textbook as well as make sure the textbook and your notes match. Uh, I'm going to throw in a couple of other tips too. Uh, and this may only be relevant for those in college, but um, study groups are great, not just for tests, but just for, you know, camaraderie and, and, and social interaction. Uh, making sure you understand the concepts that were discussed in class, it's very important. 
Um, you know, and, and another thing, if you're going to buy college books, textbooks, uh, buy them online. Do not buy them locally because it probably cost you heck, uh, a heck of a lot more. Uh, I wish I would have had the internet uh, around when I was in college because you end up spending hundreds of dollars on textbooks, and then when you go to sell them back at the uh, at the end of the semester, uh, they give you like two dollars. It, it's a, I'm telling you, the college textbooks are a scam. Um, so the, the couple things, and then I also want to tell you a funny story. I thought, I, at least I thought it was funny. Uh, since I was a, an English major, I uh, took a lot of classes that weren't really. Uh, they didn't test on, you know, check one, check two, check three. It'd be more like expository writing. Um, and they were like blue book tests, these little books that had a blue cover and, and lines on which you would actually write the answer. And then you'd be given a question. Well, one of my classes, it was a class, I can't remember exactly what, but I remember we were supposed to learn this poem. We were supposed to read this poem and then analyze it in class. And the day we were supposed to analyze it, no one read the poem, so the teacher was just livid. She's like, I can't believe you guys didn't read it, blah, 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 blah. I worked hard, blah, blah. We, She was really upset. So fast forward to the blue book test, and um, the blue book question was specifically on that poem. And despite having been yelled at that day, I still didn't read the poem. So uh, the question was posed uh, on how these symbols should be interpreted. I think it was three symbols in a tree is all I can remember. And you had to explain what this symbol was, what this symbol was, and this symbol was. And you had to fill this blue book, this pages. You had to write it. You had to explain and support your arguments and everything. So uh, I did. Even uh, not, I could have given up. I could have said, I, I don't know. So uh, I uh, dug deep into my soul. How should I answer? How should I write this? And filled that blue book with uh, knowledge. And uh, turned it in a couple days later or a week later, whenever it was that we got it back. Uh, I opened it up thinking, oh, God, I don't even want to look. I don't even want to look. Got an A-. minus. And uh, <laughs> she wrote in there specifically, I wish I would have saved this, uh, either, either you read this and understood it or you're really talented. Either way, A minus. And uh, so that's when I learned I was a writer. <laughs> um, not so much of a reader, I guess. I'm <laughs> just more of a writer. Uh, I can I can look at something and get an overview and then take the ball and run with it. And uh, so, yeah, that's a BS. Snake Eyes is, is what it's called. Embellishment, we shall say, to keep it kind. Uh, so anyway, uh, I just wanted to say to everybody out there, you know, good luck if you are in school. See it through. Don't quit. Uh, Kat, you uh, wanted to throw in a, a few other ideas that you had as we were uh, reading through these tips. Thanks, Chris. I sure did. Um, one of them is actually a study tip. Um, I didn't think about this till you were discussing note-taking and such, and I kind of threw it out in chat. And a few of the kids immediately said, oh, my God, that's a great idea. Um, this does take up a little bit more time, but I promise you it's well worth it. Uh, I, what I did when I started college when I was 29, and what I used to do is I would write down literally almost everything in class because I was so afraid starting college that late that I would have trouble learning and retaining. Um, so when I got out of class and I had my study time, I would then go back over my notes, highlight the important things, and end up making like either clear notes or an outline or something. Um, not only did that help me focus more on the important parts, it also helped me retain the information a lot, lot better. So that's my little study tip there. Um, the other thing I wanted to add is something that Ponzi and I actually were discussing earlier uh, when we were on Yahoo together. If you're not a kid, don't be afraid to go to school. Um, like I said, I started school at 29. I accomplished things during college that I guarantee I never would have been able to when I was 18 or 19. So please don't ever think that you can't or you may not fit in with the 19 year olds or you may have a lot of trouble learning or something because that's honestly not true. Um, go for it. There's no reason that you shouldn't. And that's all I wanted to add. Thanks, Chris. No problem. I wish the internet would have been more mature when I was still in school. I mean, it really didn't start to take off until I started pursuing a degree. Uh, I, w I was actually going for a, a, a graduate degree, a little... Uh, 
uh, right immediately after, and then not long after I started doing that, I realized, uh, I think I want to do this internet business thing, and so I did. And that's when LockerGnome.com was born, uh, a little over a decade ago. So anyway, if anybody else has any top five tips for uh, folks who are in school or note-taking in general, or top five tips about education, maybe it has to do with technology, maybe it doesn't, doesn't matter to me. Email me your tips and tricks. I'd love to share them with the rest of the community. My email address is chris at perillo.com. And you can also join us in our chat room. Uh, we've got all these people here who are chatting. Uh, and of course, we do have uh, our friends who are on Ventrilo that are able to chat by voice, at least. I mean, li li their voice. You heard Kat just a couple seconds ago. Um, so we're always here. Uh, and we're an active community, I guess, um, people who enjoy sharing information, helping people, sometimes asking for help, and uh, you know, what are you waiting for? I mean, if you've done your homework for the day, you might as well stop by and chat. I mean, yeah, you can go play a game, or you can even play a game and chat at the same time. That's been known to happen. So uh, the only thing you need to do is, is know where to go, right? And they're saying where you guys can chat in the chat room. It's right there, live.perillo.com. Well, you later.